The story of calculus is intriguing and reveals that our Indian mathematical system was not only far advanced and ahead by centuries in concepts, calculations and precisions from the rest of the world, but was also subjected to unlimited appropriations by Westerners to claim it as their own. Where in fact all they did is mostly application and compilation of the existing Indian results. The fact of the research and matter is that calculus was neither a European invention nor anything close was the subject of their thoughts until the dire needs of the church to travel abroad and spread Christianity had them stumbled upon the vast Indian mathematical knowledge body. But sadly the history of science as commonly taught to us in India is mostly and falsely Eurocentric. Not only this, nearly all the fundamental knowledge in astronomy, navigation, agriculture and mathematics that European countries claim to have mastered was either taken as it is from India to Europe or was translated and secretly transported to Europe in a mission mode. This all started in the 16th century from Greece and with the help of Arabs who retransmitted almost everything what they had learned from India to Europe. This happened via either trade missions of Jesuit priests in the name of European scholarly pursuits and scholarly translations of existing Indian mathematical and astronomical system. What is known in the world today as modern calculus of the 17th century due to Newton and Leibniz was the direct result of the use of all the fundamentals that is infinitesimals, infinite series, sine, cosine series, etc. that were developed independently in India. To substantiate our claims, we first need to look at the major developments in two other parts of the world that time, besides Europe and India. Greece or ancient Greek and Arabs, the two main countries where the scientific literature from India was consumed and used for transportation to Europe. Let's come to the mathematical story of Greece. Mathematics in Greece predates that of Europe by several centuries, but Greek language and culture spread across these areas to a great extent and hence mathematics published in England, America, German, even Moritz Cantor thus have dealt with Greek mathematics largely in their works. But literature of Greece itself was all Indian underneath with Greek polishing. To know the chronology of all the inventions and discoveries that happened in Greek, the ages can be laid down as follows. From Greek Dark Ages, that is 1100 to 800 BC, to Classical Antiquity, which is 8th century BC, times of Homer, no evidence of development related to calculus or geometry can be found. Then followed the ages of Classical Greece, Hellenistic period, which is 323 to 146 BC, end of Ancient Greece, which is 30 BC, emergence of Christianity and the decline of the Roman Empire, which is 5th century AD, end of Antiquity, culminating in the early Middle Ages, which is 600 to 1000 AD. Beginning of elementary geometry is credited to Thales, 624 to 548 BC, who gave Thales theorem and intercept theorem using deductive proofs. Contributions of Pythagoras, 570 to 495 BC, are still debatable. So as of Aristotle, 384 to 322 BC, for his influential and aesthetic philosophy over his mathematical abilities. Nevertheless, geometry was founding its roots with his theorem. Now, the only precursor to calculus was the method of exhaustion used by Antiphon, 5th century BC, and later by Archimedes, 287 to 212 BC, and Exodus, 390 to 337 BC. Student of Plato who proved areas of circles and squares, Archimedes was able to use some infinitesimals in a way that is similar to modern integral calculus of today. However, he had no contribution to calculus. Some of his best inventions included screw pump, pulleys, and defensive war machines to protect his native Syracuse from invasion. Later on, drawing on these concepts, Euclid, 300 BCE, published elements in 13 books with several results, including above and came to be known as the father of geometry. Largely, Greece had not yet developed any concepts of calculus on their own. The story of original calculus by India begins with two simple questions that cannot be solved using only algebra and geometry. Question 1. How to calculate an instantaneous speed or rate of change of something rather than just an average speed, which is integral calculus? Now, this problem was not new to Hindu astronomers Aryabhatta, which is 476 to 550 CE, and Brahmagupta. They called this instantaneous motion as 
तत्कलिका संस्कृत फॉर इंस्टेंटेनियस वेलोसिटी एंड गिव द फॉर्मूला फॉर इट लॉन्ग बैक विल प्रोवाइड द प्रूफ लेटर ऑन एंड क्वेश्चन नंबर टू हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द एरिया अंडर कर्व रादर दैन जस्ट द एरिया ऑफ रेगुलर ऑब्जेक्ट लाइक स्क्वेयर triangles and circles all these details were known to the scholars and mathematicians of what was known as kerala school 1300 to 1600 ce a well known center of mathematics and astronomy in the 15th and 16th centuries long before europeans were familiar with these concepts as such for many concepts such as development of infinitesimal series and its applications which were central to calculus and transcend many other branches of modern mathematics today The origin was neither Greece nor Europe, and definitely not China. Mathematicians who belonged to this school developed comprehensive theories and codified the science in palm leaf bundles, which are known as grunts, equivalent to but far superior yet than modern books. Again, we will provide the proofs later on. Those included Bhaskar Acharya, Brahma Gupta, Varaha Mihir, and so on. Let's take a look at some of the notable achievements of this school and what they are known by in the world today. Well, it gives a fair idea of how much successful Europeans are today in their attempt to claim Indian math as their own. First of all, the concepts such as limit, infinite series were developed in this school in around 1350, which is 300 years before Newton and Leibniz. Secondly, the text Yukti Bhasha written by the Indian astronomer Jishtadev of the school was a veritable textbook of original calculus and offers detailed explanations of most of the results used today. All of them are now being named after European mathematicians. It contained extensive trigonometric tables developed by Madhava which is 1340 to 1425 along with his seminal contributions to the study of infinitesimal series expansion for sine cosines arc tangents asymptotic expansions value of pi earlier cited in mahagyanayan prakar that were never introduced anywhere else in the world with an astounding accuracy all of these tables was published by clavius in 1607 under his name without any proof of any calculations leaving no doubts as from where he took them in europe The first such series were developed by James Gregory in 1667, 3 centuries after Madhava. Today it is referred to as the Madhava Gregory Leibniz series. While the use of arithmetic and geometric series appeared in Vedic literature in 2000 BC, but Madhav laid the foundations for the development of modern calculus. Now let's come to the third part. Series expansion for trigonometric functions were described by Nilakant in Sanskrit verses. in an astronomical treatise called tantra sangraha the same expansion of sine cosine and octant functions became taylor series of today again we'll give you the proofs later on and the series expansion of pi became gregory series developed by him 300 years before gregory discovered them the kerala mathematicians had laid the foundations for a complete system of fluxions and these works abounded with fluxional forms and series to be found in no work of foreign countries c m wis noted western englishman who first wrote up the works of kerala school in 1835 let's come to the fourth part neil kant in the same book proposed models that became tychonic model of planetary motions published by tycho brah in 1583 centuries later the fifth part Jishtadev's Yukti Bhasha formula involving a passage to infinity to calculate the area under a parabola was used by Fermat, Pascal, and Wallis. Let's come to the sixth part. Bhaskar Acharya has a monumental work such as Karana Kautuhale, which is calculation of astronomical wonders, and Siddhanta Shiromani, head jewel of accuracy, that later became Rolle's theorem, continued to challenge French mathematicians for centuries. In Jishtadev, we find the notion of integration termed sankalitam. which is collection as in the statement ekadya kothara pad sankalitam samam padvara gatinate pakati and even after all of this the above account is only an infinitesimal attempt to put light on the origin of these great mathematical discoveries and even after all of this the above account is only an infinitesimal attempt to put light on the origin of these great mathematical discoveries but an important question to be asked here is why this intellectual loot was so easy for europeans did we know it was happening back then did we not care enough or were we weak to defend several reasons exist to explain this 
Notably, the first of it lies in the way Hindu philosophy works. We believe in doing things not for the sake of prestige or award, but for the sake of exploration and knowledge and ultimate realization. For a Hindu, search for truth has always been an end in itself and not an end to achieve anything more, be it math or science, literature or philosophy. Ramanujan once said, an equation has no meaning for me unless it expresses a thought of God. No other philosophy in the world, let alone Europeans, believe in this. The other reason was Jesuits. The Society of Jesus of the Catholic Church had its members called by the name Jesuits. The church in its prejudiced colonial mind believed that discoveries and inventions should be at the disposal of only and only Europeans and anything that bear any other name should be suppressed. Kerala at that point of time was in continuous contact with China, Arabia and Europe. The port of Mozaris near Sangamagrama was a major center of maritime trade and a number of Jesuit missionaries and traders were active in this region. While in Kerala, use of astronomy, mathematics, calendar etc. aided many socio-cultural practices of that time such as weather forecasts, determining positions and movements of celestial bodies in Europe that was needed to make explorations to meet the objective of the church. Enamored by the vastness of the Indian literature body, Europeans took the task of translating the Indian work due to little knowledge of the medieval form of the local language of Kerala, Malayalam and Sanskrit and transmitting them to Europe by Jesuits, missionaries and traders whose presence in Kerala from the middle of the 16th century was well documented in many historical records belonging to that period. But there existed a third reason too. The intellectual careers of both Newton and Leibniz are well documented and there is no indication of their work not being their own. But unfortunately, this is not the case with Indian literature, as we have followed the oral tradition mainly, which although is far more authentic. The earliest known recovered Indian work is a mutilated copy of Bhakshali manuscript containing work as old as of 300 AD. Other such works are Arya Bhatia, 499 AD, 3 Satika, 750 AD. A very good example of this fallacy arising out of incomplete documentation can also be found in the paper located here. We'll give you the link right after this video. Now that link states that the details of the circumstances and ideas leading to the discovery of the series by Lebanese and Gregory are known, but the Indian proof and contribution ascribed to Nilkant is not. It is evident and clear today that calculus was indeed an Indian product and the same arguments and facts holds true for other discoveries such as the laws of motion, uncertainty principle to modern day concepts of zero, the decimal number, microwave communication, genetics and the list is exhaustive. So do we mean to say that the Europeans did nothing? Newton and Lebanese independently pioneered the infinitesimal methods and developed strong algorithmic compendiums that came to be known as calculus or infinitesimal calculus or modern calculus. Still, both never arrived to any genuineness and proof of their results and their only point of argument and defense against Jesuits, Bishop, Judge, etc. was that since the results they were producing were correct, the methods have to be fundamentally correct too. Their arguments continued for two more centuries until a French mathematician, Cauchy, proved theorems of calculus in his books of infinitesimal calculus titled Course de Analyse, published in 1821. Europeans just developed new methods of doing the same thing, albeit in a more articulated fashion. But all these arguments need one more point to reason why it happened with India and not with any other country. A good point, in fact, from those who will still not believe what is being presented above with facts, that is, why present day India was so ahead millennia ago that Europeans could only dream of even today. One of the most important reasons why our science was so advanced was that the results were not based on inference and testimony alone using material objects of limited precision and human errors. That these are incomplete tools to explore any scientific discipline in question to its fullest realization. We knew well. Take a look at this verse from Atreya Upanishad. 
तत् प्रज्ञा नेत्रम प्रज्ञा ने प्रतिष्ठितम प्रज्ञा नेत्रे लोक प्रज्ञानम ब्रह्म प्रज्ञान अब ऑल्सो हिंटेड इन वेदर्स एंड एलबोरेटेड इन उपनिषद्स रेफर्स टू द हाइएस्ट एंड प्योरेस्ट फॉर्म्स ऑफ विस्टम इंटेलिजेंस एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग हायर देन एनी नॉलेज ऑप्टेन्ड बाय रीजनिंग एंड इनफेरेंस रैशनल इंटेलेक्ट दैट यूरोपियंस टुडे सो बोस्ट ऑफ इज वेयर लॉजिक इंक्लूड्स इन शेम विदाउट रीचिंग इवन द पेरिफेरी ऑफ सच कॉस्मिक इंटेलिजेंस व्हिच इज अलौकिक प्रत्यक्ष and deeper meaning in terms of an equation think of it as using a pre developed equation or proving an equation in a different way which has already been proved is not same as actually devising a completely new equation this was not possible for newton while with pragyan the enlightenment and understanding that dawns is beyond what one has heard about or deduced from external sources in a more profound level anything which is outside of one's own consciousness can never reveal the true nature of a thing be it mathematical formula or a discovery nothing else can explain why even ordinary rishis which is scientific seers and kavis of bharat could easily know the advanced concepts of today like twin star arundhati and vashisht the atomic state of matter concepts of time shunya and eternity etc it was a direct result of harnessing that power which is the source of structures of all human experience itself to them these were ordinary things what europe and the world at large are discovering and exploring even today after hundreds of years of research such a state of ritambhara pragya was also experienced nominally by ramanujan what is sad today is not the fact that bharat varsh has been robbed of its uniqueness and identity but that no one in power for whatsoever reason cared to revolt and take it back many ancient techniques we lost to no one's use and many concepts in scientific knowledge lost to the outside world like calculus even hundreds of indian medicinal herbs formula have been lost to foreign us patentees who were too quick to know of their values and now we cannot manufacture them the truth is that all nations from east to west are nothing but schooled by ancient bharat in some way or the other in art literature philosophy music science astronomy economics and mathematics to an unprecedented extent and it should be a matter of realization as equally by them as it is by us jai hind jai bharat